I get to introduce Jose Haslam of Dragon Search Marketing. He has been doing SEO and internet marketing since before Moby Dick was a dubby. Oh, I remember that. Uh, <laughs> uh, he's listed at number four of the top 100 social media influencers and was recently called the godfather of social media in a news feature. Now, I'm going to stop myself right here. Do you realize the quality of the speaker that you have here today yep. at no cost? If you wanted to take a course like this, it would cost you thousands of dollars for this four program, this four seminar program that you're getting for free. He has spoken across the US and Canada on digital marketing, SEO, social media, and e-commerce. He's traveled here today from Montreal to share with us. Let's welcome Jose. figured out that I have these available. This is a little bit of an eye chart, but I have this available to take with you. You can grab it at the break. Also, I have it online as a PDF. So I have two basic presentations today. We're gonna to cover this, how to grow your business online, the full spectrum of it. Then we're gonna dive down as deep as you guys wanna get in some of the hands-on e-commerce in the second section. Got a little bit of preamble, then I have a bunch of things on the web. I'm pretty fearless if you ask me a question about this, that. The other thing, we'll go take a look at it on the web and, and check it out. All right, so how do you grow your business online? All right, so a few stats. Everyone knows people are shopping. Even in Africa, 53% of the people have bought something using digital technologies. All right, 83% in North America. I think maybe Canadians don't shop so much. Yeah. You heard earlier about mobile. Mobile marketing is Here's magazines, 1%, newspapers, minus 7. Wow. Minus 7. Newspapers are dying. They're dying fast. What's <laughs> coming up is you have internet is bigger than TV, social media is three times the size of internet, and then mobile marketing is, is exploding. Mm. So when they get to the mobile marketing section later, I would say pay attention to that. Online, e-commerce online here, this is just U.S. statistics, and I don't believe these numbers. I, I firmly believe it's going to continue to compound faster than this. But come year 2016, $361 billion. I mean, it's huge. So how do you grow your business online? All right, we're going to take a look at a fairly simple process here. It's a flow chart, decision tree. You have to have a website. Now, you can be on Google Places. You can be on <coughs> Facebook, I don't recommend it. I really recommend you have your own home, your own domain name, something that you're building equity in as you go along. If you don't have a website today, there's lots of options available for you. You can go ahead and get an instant site. Yahoo, Intuit with Google are doing these as well. You can also use UltraCard, Volusion, any number of other solutions to build yourself a site. Again, I'd say if you're doing that, make sure you get your own domain name. Don't just hang off of Yahoo. I highly recommend self-hosted WordPress. You host it yourself, very cheap and expensive. You can use something like Bluehost. So WordPress for a website itself, two years ago this wasn't true, right? I would use WordPress for blogging, WordPress for certain features, but I'd still be building the site in HTML and CSS. Today you can do everything in WordPress, build yourself a really nice site. If you need e-commerce, then you can tie a number of things into that WordPress site. Again, I mentioned Volusion earlier. You can use Volusion. There's a number of WordPress plugins that'll let you do e-commerce as well. If you have more money and have the need, you do a custom CMS, it's just your own super personalized WordPress site, and you can use Magneto, which is a software tool to integrate with WordPress to go ahead and build yourself a site. Now, a couple things. 207 million internet users in the US at the end of 2011, 94% use search as they're getting ready to buy something. They may buy it offline, but they're still searching online. Now, analytics. Okay, honest answer. Raise your hand. How many people here wash their hands after they're in a public restroom? Okay, this has nothing to do with the presentation. I just want to see. <laughs> no, I mean, analytics is just like that. You have to do analytics. What happens is Google, the search engines are giving you free statistics every single day. 
you get to see who's touching your site, how they're touching your site, if they're leaving, when they're leaving, why they're leaving. Very, very important. It gives you free business intelligence. So just install Google Analytics. That's all I'll say about that. You have a website, you have analytics installed. Now, is your site effective? We're going to talk about effectiveness versus credibility here. You may have no traffic coming to your site. You think you're all that, but Google's not bringing anybody to your site. You're not getting the traffic sources. If that's the case, you want to try <coughs> SEO, social media, you need to do link building back to your site. Bounce rate. Okay, a hundred professors said a bounce. People don't know what a bounce is. A bounce is someone comes to your site, throws up, and leaves. That's what a bounce is. So bounce rate in your analytics is very, very important to understand. As a matter of fact, it's easier to increase your conversions with your existing traffic than it is to get more traffic to your site. And the first thing you focus on is the bounce rate and try to understand why people are bouncing off of your site. People are coming to your site, they're finding you, they're not immediately leaving, but they're not buying anything. So maybe you've got the wrong keywords, maybe you're bringing the wrong people to your site. Maybe they're getting there, but your calls to action, I'll use the French word, they suck. They're just not, they're not there, they, they, don't, they don't work for you. You're not asking them to do something, so they're like, well, I'm kind of interested, but I don't even know where to buy this, so they leave. These are all things which you can uncover through analytics. So don't make people think. Don't make them click two, three, four times to get somewhere that should be very easy to get to. You want to have a consistent user interface. Don't go inventing your own. I mean, things out there like Amazon are very successful. They've been training a lot of people how to use the internet. So don't go off in some harebrained scheme of your own. Now, credibility. The site can be effective from a SEO standpoint. It can be bringing traffic to it, but it just doesn't look right. It's not credible. So you want to have it convey, if you're a surgeon, you want to have a site that looks like you're a professional surgeon. You don't want it to look like it's a GoDaddy template. You just don't. People are going to not, not be down with that to this day. You also want to use third-party citations. A number of different ways to get those. You could have UL Labs basically endorse your site, you know, the good housekeeping seal of approval. There's lots of those out there. If you're a lawyer, there's a number of different ways to get cited. You want to show off your people. All right? People like people. They, they, they see this guy here, it looks like he's a, you know, looks like he's a good guy. They say, oh yeah, I like him. He's got a warm manner about him. I'd like to do business with him. So take a look at some. I just grabbed some landscapers. This looks professional. They got Lincoln Center right here on the front page. I can't figure out how to contact them. They're making me click around to find out where they are. If I'm on my phone, I'm already off somewhere else. You know, but it looks pretty credible from the standpoint here. This lady here, she does rooftop gardens in New York City. You instantly get that looking at her site. Again, weak on the contact. This one here, I have no idea what they're thinking. This is their website. It looks like it's a Google Places. I have no idea who they are. I don't know what they're doing, and i got to click down into things to figure it out. I'm, I'm not staying here. I'm just not going to do it. These guys, okay, look. Let me show you how sad this is. First of all, it's Facebook. <laughs> They have 11 people like them, which means they couldn't even get their grandmother to like them. Right? They got nothing going on. Here's their highlights. Uh, something way back, I mean, they're dead. I mean, if they think they have an internet presence, this is called Darwinian theory. They're not going to be around next year. Okay, now. I'm not going to go through this, but there's lots of ways to take a look. I ran a site. I took a look at numbers. A hundred is your top number on page authority. None of these sites we looked at are doing great. 49 is the best. They have some links coming back to them. They're doing okay. But this is some of the stuff you can grab with analytics, some of the tools to understand how your site's actually performing. The other tail of tape is keywords. So this guy, the first one we looked at with the um, Lincoln Center, he's got his name, 111, his name, MN Landscape Architects, it's built into his name. He's not in Minnesota, he's in New York. He shows up for that, but when you come down to Landscape Architecture Firms in New York City, it's the first thing he's ranking for, three, third down from the top, there's 46 people a month typing that in. Did you uh, just copy that from somewhere, or did you have to compile it? Is that this the way? Th this, is a, this is a tool that goes out and just looks at keywords per se. There's a number of different tools out there. I have all these in my blog post, so you can actually come back and recreate all this information.
just going through the lady who had the gardens, New York Garden Design 1, Rooftop Garden Design 1, Garden Design New York 1, Roof Garden Designs 1. She's found first page over and over and over again. So mm -hmm. very successful site. She's showing up New York City Landscapers 3, New York City Landscaping 2, Roof Garden Designs 2. She's doing a great job. She's crushing all the other people out there in terms mm -hmm. of being found. What happens is if you're number one, you could be getting 40, 45% of that traffic, they'll click through and they'll come to your site. Now, I don't know what's happening on the back end. I don't know if people are actually contacting her, filling out a request for information. I don't have access to analytics. This is the first thing, get the traffic, turn the traffic into conversions. All right, so you got a website, you have analytics installed, you're washing your hands. The site's effective, the site's credible enough, you, you think it's okay. Now we're down to you need business now, right now. You're expanding, you lost a major client, you know, or you can grow it over time. If you need it right now, we're gonna take you into the realm of pay-per-click. Pay-per-click is right here. These are ads. These are ads over here, this is pay-per-click. This is the organic. So again, I stick them with landscape architecture. So these are the organic listings. And I just want you to note down below, images are showing up here. Images and videos are really important. Usually they're up higher on the page. So if you do a good job keywording your images and videos, people will say, wow, that looks pretty cool. They'll click through that. They'll ignore everything else on the page. So in the pay-per-click, the thing you want to understand is do you have positive return on investment or not by doing pay-per-click or some form of advertising? I'm going to give you a concrete example here in a minute. All right, if you do, then you want to take a look at paid search. If not, can you repackage your services in such a way that it makes sense? Do you have lifetime value on what it is that you're selling? So let's just jump into an example. So real life example, I actually have them for the second half as a e-commerce example. Landscapers need dumpsters. So here's a roll off dumpster company. Cost per click is $1.98. Their cost per lead, a phone call or an email, was $6.59. They had a really poor conversion rate, 15%. Industry was more like 60. But it was what it was. So their cost per sale was $43.96. Their gross profit per sale was $174.96. Now, if you don't understand these numbers, find me on the break. You're going to hand me 44. You're going to hand me $174. I'm going to hand you 44. All right, you're gonna hand me 174, I'm gonna hand you 44. We're gonna keep doing that until the light bulb goes off. All right, this is what they were making. They were making the net of $131 on the pay-per-click, just putting it right in their pocket. However, the average reorders per new client was six. So this dropped the average lifetime cost of sales down to $7.33, not 43 dollars So very, very important to understand that. Their adjusted cost of sales of revenue was 1.3%. On gross was four percent. Very, very nice pay-per-click program. They're printing money with this program. All right, so you have you determine that what you're paying for clicks and what you're getting on the back end, you can make some money on it. Do it. If you are only have a couple thousand a month or less that you want to do in paid search, you can do it yourself and or use Google Express. It's a new tool they have. Over two thousand, I highly recommend you get professional help. Okay, because what happens is these guys are just, I mean, they live in a little cave, they're shaving pennies off the click. I mean, it's amazing. My guy comes to me, oh, I saved three cents on that campaign, but there are 15,000 clicks a month at three cents. It adds up really quickly. With that said, pay-per-click flattens out. It gives you some instant traction. You know, now you're at your spend rate. Yeah, this will go up slightly over time if you're really optimizing it, but very slightly. SEO takes longer. SEO is bringing the organic traffic back to you. Now, here's why. If you have a great pay-per-click program, you might have a 2% click-through ratio. What does that mean? Out of 100 searches, two of the 100 came through your ad. If you're in that number one organic position, you're getting 25, 35, 45% of the traffic, 45 clicks versus two. So once you get up there in the organic listings, you're getting a lot more traffic. So SEO over time is much more valuable to you and to your business. So you evaluate a pay-per-click, 
you understand SEO leads are eight times more potent than outbound ones. If you're still doing mailers, postcards, flyers, cold calling, whatever the case may be, the organic traffic, internet traffic is much, much more powerful. So when you come out here and you say, I'm gonna start with the SEO, we're gonna to jump to social media, it's the hot, buzzy thing, but if you're not doing SEO, give me an example. How many people here have actually ever built a sandcastle? Anybody build a sandcastle? So you build the sandcastle, you go get a bucket of water, sorry, I'm from Philly, I call it water. You get a bucket of water and you pour it in the moat, and it looks great for about 90 seconds, right? And it all dries up. That's social media, you just keep pouring it in the sand. If you put SEO in there, you're building a concrete foundation and all that social activity starts to accumulate for benefits. So you wanna lead with the SEO. Let's dive into that world. It's just the art and science of helping your site be found. All right, there's combinations to it. You want your site to be found by the search engine, you want the search engine to bring that valuable traffic back to you. There's three basic elements. You have your, what you write, for people on your site, what the spiders can read, you have to write for spiders as well, and then what's an external backlink? It's digital word of mouth. Think about that, digital word of mouth. So if, if again, I come to Mr. and he looks like he's friendly, and I say, hey, look, where's a great pie place around here? And he tells me, and I really enjoy it, next time I'm back in Stony Brook area, I'm gonna ask him again, hey, hey, we're looking for a great steak place, and, I'm getting his direct reference, I'm getting his word of mouth. The backlink is somebody wrote something about you out there in the web, and that's bringing traffic back to you. Very, very important to get. Because there's an inherent promise that the search engines have. The inherent promise is the most relevant results. All right, so if you're doing e-commerce, why would the search engine bring you traffic? Why are you relevant? The more people you can get talking about you through social media and creating backlinks for you, the more the search engines are gonna say that you're relevant. It's not magic, it's all based upon math. This is a little Google bot, they drew this, I didn't draw that. <laughs> Again, coming back here to, to this guy, he's the first person who even had a phone number on his site all the way down the bottom. I'm never gonna find this on the phone, I gotta wear my reading glasses to find it, it's not gonna happen. And why, behind the scenes, he's got his name, you can't see it up there, he's got his name that he's reading He's got 1999 image links here. I mean, storage slash random one dot JPEG. Spider has no freaking idea what that is. They can't read that. They don't understand. So this is I, this was the worst example I found out there. Somebody who doesn't understand how to write the code for the spiders to read. All right. So pay attention to that part of it. Old school shorthand optimization. People would buy backlinks. They exchange backlinks. All that bullshit now. Bullshit, all right, flat out. If you have a friend or you yourself used Indian outsourced SEO, you're, you're dead men walking because the new Penguin update from Google is going after that, eradicating those old spammy backlinks. What's happening now is it's based on relationships and relevant connections. They want to see people in kind or in your industry or have some association with you, in fact, think highly of you. If you have a link from download Hindi songs to your site, one of my new clients does, Google thinks that that's spam, and it is. And it's all being fueled by social media. So SEO, more leads at lower cost over time. You have on-site, you wanna make use of your page elements, meta tags, H1, H2, titles, links, bold tags, and then off-site, are you listed in directories, are you getting backlinks, or bloggers, or other people talking about you engaging in some way? Real simple, for e-commerce, how do you know that SEO is working? It's easy, you've got increase in backlinks, digital word of mouth over time, the number of keywords, you can see this in your analytics, everyone's doing analytics after today, the number of keywords, the different keywords are bringing traffic to your site, and you see the increase in number of visits per keyword. It's actually very easy, they'll tell you, I brought you 20 visitors, and there were 20,000 impressions. So you know where you need to get to. You say, wow, there's a lot of traffic looking for this keyword, I'm getting very little of it, I need to improve there. All right, let's dive into the world of social. So social media, I admit, a couple years ago, I thought Twitter was the perfect intersection of narcissism, ADHD, and stalking. <laughs> really, honestly, it still can be. But it's a very, very, very powerful tool. 
what happens is the world kind of sort of looks like this. You have to have your own properties, your name, your domain, something you're controlling. Out here, pay-per-click, digital advertising, other things are paid media. All these intersect and overlap. Down here, you have earned media. Oprah brings you on her show. She likes what you're doing. That's earned media. I wrote a blog post about you because I like who you are. I like what you're doing. That's earned media. Out here in the social world, <coughs> things like Facebook, LinkedIn, Flickr are embassies. You got to think about them as a foreign embassy or kind of an outpost out there in the social world. And what you're trying to do with these outposts is you're trying to get people who are influential, who know a little bit about what you're doing. I have a uh, totalcarscore.com that's a client of mine. They give you a Rotten Tomatoes like movie rating on each car. Well, we're getting more and more and more of the auto heads out there talking about those guys. They really like the concept, they like what they're doing. So they're getting this earned media and they're getting social media buzz against the website, just helping to drive traffic to the website. All these things work together. If you just have a website, you're not looking at paid, you got no one talking about you, you're not out there social, you're missing three quarters of the, of the puzzle here. These all work together today. And for SEO, social and social signals are becoming more and more important, increasingly important. Eye chart. Just, there's lots of stuff going on out here in social media. We're talking Carl Sagan-like numbers. That's all you need to know from this chart. Now, what's good to know is SEO and PPC are very well defined. You know, they, you would research, you would write ads, you test the ads, you optimize the ads. In this case, you're doing SEO, you're doing on-page optimization, website optimization, you're trying to get backlinks, all easy to understand with math. Social media also has a process to it. You research, who are your audiences, where do they live, what platforms are they on, what are those communities out there that you can talk to and get in touch with, who are the influencers. You don't want to talk to all 15,000 people, you want to talk to the 15 or 20 that truly influence all the rest of them. The social platforms turn into relationships and people talk about you, tweet about you, Facebook about you, it turns into backlinks to your site. And down here, you need to own profiles. Just even if you're not doing it today, get your name, get your name on Twitter, get your name on Facebook, get your name on LinkedIn, lock it up now before some 15-year-old Bulgarian kid does. <laughs> okay? And then what happens with that is you have desired outcomes for your business. Who are you? Who are you targeting? What are the communities? What are the influencers? You have an action plan, your solutions. You're going to make mistakes along the way. It's okay. You just execute, measure, reinvent, and keep going through this loop here. All right? So don't be intimidated by social. Approach it methodically. Different way of looking at it. Here's your goals. You do keyword research. You do competitor research. The funny thing about the internet is everything's out there. So you can take, if you have a successful competitor, it's all out there. You can, there's the downside, there's ways you can handle this, but you rip it off. You're like, wow, this is really working for them. How can I do something similar in my site, with my campaign, on my page, whatever the case may be? The key is content and content strategy. The more content you're creating, the better off you're gonna be. We'll dive into that here in a little bit. And then all the outcomes, by the way, your conversions, ranks, backlinks, social signals, visitors, are all again measured by analytics. You can take a look at all that, how that's working. You look at your reporting, it comes right back into what your goals are. So social, okay. The process for social is do you have profiles? So maybe you've got a Facebook page, that's it. Get yourself your LinkedIn profile, get yourself set up in Merchant Circle, get yourself set up in Yelp, get your Google Places going. Get yourself a Twitter account. Try to get them all with like a vanity name. They're all synced together. Time and look, even if you shelf it, just let it sit there, grab, grab the profile. Find out where your customers are and spend some time on this platform. Just lurk, just listen for now. How do you do it? Look, I don't know how better explain this. It's social media. If you go to a networking party, a cocktail party tonight, and you immediately go up, Hi, my name's Joseph, I do internet sales. You think he's talking to me for more than 10 seconds? No. Get to know, oh dear, he actually likes uh, trains and he has an HO model railroad train. And we start talking about that. I'm like, oh my God, you know, yeah, my, I was like four, my dad built. You build a relationship. That, that's exactly what you do in social media. You lead with the relationships, 
the business ultimately comes. I'll repeat it, do not get onto social just to self-promote, okay? So have profiles. If you're not on Google Places, AKA now Google Plus, get there. Register. Make sure your name, address, phone number are consistent across all the platforms. Make sure your trade dress, your brand images, people go from one to the other, they can still recognize you. Interesting fact, internet ads will pass TV advertising at 40 billion plus in 2012. So internet advertising will pass TV for the first time in history this year and continue to grow. Do you need a social policy? Do you have employees? Do you have employees? Employees make some kind of policy for yourself. Some people think they shouldn't be doing social. If you think there's too much risk, if you're in a highly regulated industry, you might want to avoid it for a little bit, but guess what? Your competitors are doing it. Pharmaceuticals are getting into it. Financial services are getting into it. Those who think they don't have to are going to be left behind. The key is to listen when you get on the social platforms, listen to the conversations, try to figure out who the people are, who the influencers are. And then from listening here, it's actually very easy to do. There's something called Google Alerts. You can set up Google Alerts, and anytime your name's mentioned, your business is mentioned, other things around your industry are mentioned, you actually get an email from Google telling you about it. That's one of the very simple ways of doing it. Lots of other tools will help you listen as well. Nice, interesting stat. 80% or 82, depending on which survey, of shoppers <coughs> change purchase decisions based on negative reviews. They want to buy your product or service. They see somebody wrote a bad review about you. They don't do it. 80%. Mm -hmm. So do you even know what people are saying about your business out there? Are you paying attention to it? Now, from here in social, if you have a blog and your blog's shareable, and anybody comes to your blog, even you get your grandmother to come to your blog, and they share that out, they tweet that out, they Facebook that out, and it has the potential for discovery. All right, there's well over 500 million people on Twitter. I tweet something out there. Was that the Blog World Expo in New York last week happened to be the you know, the most popular tweeter there that actually gave me some award or something, but over 7 million people saw my tweets. I, I have like 22,000 people following me. 7 million people saw my tweets. They got retweeted. That was the range. Other people were grabbing stuff and posting it out to their communities. And it was this big Clairol commercial. You know, you tell two friends, they tell two friends. That's what happens out there in the social media space. So you need to understand that if you have something people are interested in, they share it. You're really widening, diversifying the amount of people who are going to come in contact with you. Then your goal is have shareworthy blogs. You want to get linked to. You want people to talk about something that you wrote. You got a limousine business and somebody really liked it and they're recommending it for their friends or family and they, you know, took a, what, what, whatever. They went from here down to Jones Beach. I probably just keep going to North Carolina, but they, you know, they took a trip somewhere and they write about it. Great. That's what you want to have happen because that gets you backlinks, increases your digital footprint, and that's how you win. So companies that blog get 434% more pages indexed by Google, more pages, the more Google comes back and looks at your site, the more relevant they believe you are, okay, and the more traffic they start to bring to your site. Plus, blogging, you don't have to blog about, so again, back to the limousine business, you have a limo, limo business, you don't have to blog about that. You can blog about the Roger Waters concert you went to and what a great time it was and brought back all these memories of when you were in college, in high school, whatever. People will come across that, read that, and say, wow, how cool is that? Oh, he's got a limo service? So I've had I've clients who do this. They'll blog about personal things. People find that, like it, and then say, oh, wow, he's an accountant. Oh, my aunt needs an accountant. Right? Again, think about the social aspects of that. Now, blogs cited as the least expensive lead source. Everyone's familiar with trade shows. We already talked about pay-per-click. Trade shows, 19%. PPC, 28%. Telemarketing. I do not answer the phone anymore. It doesn't, I'm not in this 33%. Direct mail, doesn't work for me either. SEO at 38%. Social media, 45%. But blogs, 52% at below average cost per lead. So there's already a building base of knowledge, belief, and statistics out there that blogging is very, very effective for bringing in leads. This is coming from HubSpot out of Boston. 
All right, so where are we here? We want to go ahead and we keep benchmarking performance of site, PPC, SEO, and social against your overall business objectives. Revise those plans as needed. You have the statistics, you have the analytics. You can see what's working or not working. And all these things together, another view of it, content fuels Google organic traffic. This is by uh, one of the fellows up top here, Google fellow. These are the recent updates last year of Panda coming up with these updates. With the content that was out there, every update that Panda went for, and they were looking for relevance, this particular site that was a control site went from being found for 132 keywords to 355 keywords. It just became more and more relevant. What Panda was going after were, were thin sites, sites that didn't really have great content. And they started to emphasize sites that did have good content. And so those sites that had good content were benefiting directly from how Google was changing its algorithm. <clears throat> so in order to win, in order to grow your business online, start with your site, make it credible, make it effective, make sure you're measuring it, evaluate PPC or other types of digital advertising to help grow your business, migrate to SEO as soon as you can. From there, start listening, engaging in social. Again, keep benchmarking it, revise as needed, the goal is to get backlinks for what you're doing, and that's how you win. So, super quick overview. If you just find me on dragonsearch.net, you'll be able to get the presentation decks. Go to the blog there, the deck's already up there, and there's a PDF wall poster up there as well. So this complete deck's up there with some other notes, and also a bunch of links to the research behind all this, so you can actually go click through and read the articles, and you know, take a look at some of the other statistics that are sitting behind this.